I've covered a number of disastrous reunion tours and concerts on my channel, including Days of the New, Led Zeppelin, and The Doors. The links to those videos are down below. But today, let's talk about Van Halen's disastrous reunion tour in 2004 with Sammy Hagar. Frontman Sammy Hagar would join Van Halen in 1985 after David Lee Roth left the group and pursued a solo career. Despite changing singers, Van Halen still enjoyed plenty of success with Hagar until his departure in 1996. The frontman would tell Rolling Stone what his final days were like in the band, recalling, Oh, I was fired. I was told that I quit by Eddie. It was Father's Day, Sunday morning, 9am, the phone rings, and I'm laying there with my brand new baby. He goes, you know, you always wanted to be a solo artist, so go ahead and be one. We're going to get Dave back in the band. And when he said that, I flew out of the bed like I'd seen a ghost, and I said, wow, and a few expletives went back and forth from me. Unfortunately for the band, things with Roth wouldn't work out at the time, and they would enlist extreme frontman Gary Sharon and put out their much maligned album Van Halen 3. It was following the album and the tour that Van Halen parted ways with Sharon and briefly entertained bringing Roth back once again, but things fell apart. Hagar, in the years after leaving Van Halen, had thought about reconnecting with his old bandmates. The 2004 reunion would be kicked off when Hagar placed a phone call to drummer Alex Van Halen. It was that initial chat that led the frontman to pay a visit to guitarist Eddie Van Halen's 5150 Studios. It resulted in Hagar jamming with the Van Halen brothers and even recording three new songs for their 2004 Greatest Hits album, Best of Both Worlds, which would peak at number three on the album charts. Hagar would reveal on a Facebook post looking back at that time, it was interesting going back into the studio with Van Halen and creating new music for every package of the greatest hits. This kind of thing is what broke up the band the first time in 1995. I was against doing a greatest hits of any kind and wanted to make a new record. Next came talk of doing a tour together, but Eddie's personal problems were glaringly obvious to Hagar, who wrote in his book, Read My Uncensored Life in Rock. He looked like he hadn't bathed in weeks. He was missing a number of teeth, and the ones he had left were black. His boots were so worn out he had gaffer's tape wrapped around them, and his big toe stuck out. He walked up to me, hunched over like a little old man, a cigarette in his mouth. He had a third of his tongue removed because of cancer, and he spoke with a slight lisp. Eddie's personal problems gave Hagar a reason to pause and think about whether he wanted to rejoin the band, and he would go on to write in his book, he had turned into the weirdest expletive I'd ever seen, crude, rude, and unkempt. I should have walked, but Eddie's got a very charming, cunning side to him, where you feel like he's got a good heart. He's going to come through, he's going to clean up, and we're going to get this thing done. Another source of contention was the role of bassist Michael Anthony. Anthony had fallen out of favor with Alex and Eddie after he continued to stay friends with Hagar in the years after he left Van Halen. Eddie and Alex didn't want Michael to join the tour, but Hagar insisted, but it came at a heavy price. Anthony would see his income dramatically slashed by the brothers, admitting to Rolling Stone in 2007. I had to concede a bunch of other stuff like percentage cuts and any claim to the trademark. I didn't need the money, I decided to suck it up because I thought if this was the last time Van Halen was performing, I wanted to be out there with them and with the fans. While the band didn't miss or cancel any of their 80 day tour, there was a lot of tension behind the scenes. Hagar and Anthony were barely on speaking terms with Eddie offstage, as they would take separate buses and planes and stay in different hotels and even had different security details. When they did speak, it resulted in Sammy and Eddie nearly coming to blows and at one point Hagar threatened to quit the tour with nearly a dozen dates left, but the threat of litigation made him think twice. The tour would wrap up in Tucson, Arizona with Eddie destroying his guitar and Hagar writing in his autobiography. It was the worst show we'd ever done in our lives. Eddie played so bad. With him adding in a different interview with Rolling Stone, there are things I can tell you now that I didn't waste my time on in my book. He was so out of tune and playing the song so wrong that there were times I couldn't sing well. I had a hard time staying on key. I would go over and I would sing with the bass because Mike would always be in tune. I'd sing to the bass, but the problem is they had Ed's guitar so loud because he would go out there every day during sound check and make sure his guitar was screaming. Hagar and Anthony would end up parting ways with Van Halen and the band would end up reuniting with David Lee Roth in 2007, touring and putting out what would be their last album in 2012. Eddie's son Wolfgang would end up playing bass during this time and Van Halen's final tour would happen in 2015 as in the subsequent years, Eddie would be diagnosed with cancer that ultimately led to him dying in 2021. It was following his death, Hagar would reveal that he did make amends with Eddie, revealing to Howard Stern, Eddie and I had been texting, and it's been a love fest since we started communicating earlier this year. We both agreed not to tell anyone because of all the rumors it would stir up about a reunion, etc. 
and we both knew that wasn't going to happen, but we also didn't want anyone to know about his health. He stopped responding to me about a month ago and I figured it wasn't good. I reached out one more time last week and when he didn't respond, I figured it was a matter of time, but it came way too soon. In the press, Hagar has revealed that former Van Halen manager Irving Asoff has reached out to him about doing a Las Vegas residency with drummer Alex Van Halen, bassist Michael Anthony, and an unnamed guitar player. He would reveal that he was staunchly against the idea of any group of musicians hitting the road under the Van Halen moniker, with one exception saying, if there was ever a situation where there was a Van Halen tribute in some kind of way with Alex, Mike, myself, Dave, if we would cooperate and Wolfie playing Eddie's parts, now that would be worthy of calling Van Halen for a moment. Wolfie would be crazy to drop his life and his creativity and his career to be his dad's mimic, but for a moment, it could be great, he would say. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again on Rock Roll Your Story Sticker.